Welcome to lecture 8-3. Uh, yeah, so this is the lecture on the pleura. The pleura are the cavities in the thorax on either side of the mediastinum, so they contain the lungs. So, of course, the pleura is going to be composed of a number of different connective tissue layers, just like the mediastinum and its pericardium. Uh, so, first, of course, we have the endothoracic fascia, which is on the inside of the thoracic wall. Closely associated with that is going to be the parietal pleura. Uh, the parietal pleura is separated into four different regions based on its location. So we see the cupola uh, of the parietal pleura is going to be closely associated with that suprapleural membrane of the endothoracic fascia. It's the portion that covers the um, uh, superior thoracic aperture. We are going to have a costal portion which is closest to the thoracic wall, uh, where the ribs are located. Thus, its name, mediastinal portion, is going to be the um, middle portion closely associated with the mediastinum, the pericardium. Uh, we also have the diaphragmatic portion that rests on top of the diaphragm. So that is all parietal pleura and its four different segments. So the parietal pleura is uh, sensory innervated by segmental arteries, the intercostal arteries, as well as some portions of the, uh, the phrenic artery along the, the midline there. Uh, next, moving deeper, we have the visceral pleura, which is adherent to the surface of the lung. Between the parietal and visceral pleural layers, you have a space called the uh, pleural cavity. And again, just like the uh, pericardial cavity, this contains a small amount of fluid uh, just to uh, facilitate the movement of the lungs. Uh, the visceral pleura is not innervated. <clears throat> uh, so we already talked about the endothoracic fascia, um, but there you can see the association there. Now, because of the shape of the pleura and the uh, pleural cavity, there are some recesses, some, some spaces uh, that are named which have clinical significance because fluid or air or whatever can build up in these spaces and impact the expansion of the lungs. So the first of these you see here, the costo-diaphragmatic recess, the space uh, between the costal parietal pleura and the diaphragmatic parietal pleura. This is the lowest point in the upright uh, pleural cavity. So for this reason, if there is uh, uh, a hemothorax, a buildup of fluid, uh, pneumothorax, uh, buildup of air within the pleural cavities, then uh, thoracocentesis, pneumothorax uh, uh, can, uh, can relieve that pneumothorax or the hemothorax. Uh, uh, hemothorax by sticking a needle in this space in order to relieve that pressure. There is also a costomediastinal uh, recess which is anterior to the mediastinum, uh, anterior to the right portion of the heart. So this is a cross section through the thorax. We can see the chambers of the heart here. We can see the aorta here and the vertebral body uh, there with the thoracic wall as such. And so the costomediastinal recess, the most anterior portion, so if an individual is laying prone, that will be the space where uh, fluid builds up. Uh, so moving on, the lungs themselves are separated by a number of fissures. The right lung is separated by two fissures, a horizontal and an oblique fissure. Because of this, the right lung has three lobes, a superior, middle, and inferior lobe. The left lung only has two lobes because it is only separated by one oblique fissure. However, uh, so the left superior lobe uh, has a sub-region called the lingua, which is this tongue-shaped portion uh, that tongues do this. I don't, I don't know why I did that. Tongues must do that. They must wag. Uh, so the lingula uh, covers the apex of the heart. So uh, the lingula is analogous to the middle lobe of the right lung. Uh, so here we can see the left lung. Okay, so all that's highlighted. So 
as we go uh, deeper into the lungs, we see that the lungs are actually anatomically separated by connective tissue into what are called bronchopulmonary segments. Each of these bronchopulmonary segments is a distinct functional respiratory unit uh, formed by the tertiary terminal bronchi. Uh, as the bronchi, uh, as the trachea branches into the primary bronchi, it will further branch very systematically into terminal bronchi, which supply these individual bronchopulmonary segments. We'll see that the, uh, the uh, pulmonary arteries uh, branch and follow the uh, terminal bronchi. So they are intrasegmental. They are closely associated with those bronchi. The veins that return oxygenated blood to the heart are intersegmental. They are going to be within the connective tissue that separates these bronchopulmonary segments. Because the lung is separated like this, um, tumors, for instance, are going to be generally restricted to one bronchopulmonary segment uh, for a longer period of time before they metastasize and expand outward to other segments. So for this reason, when uh, tumors or infections, serious infections, uh, are caught early, um, where they are only affecting one or a few bronchopulmonary segments, those individual bronchopulmonary segments can be excised surgically while the rest of the lung is maintained, the rest of the respiratory units of the lung. So uh, important for, for that. It's also important for you to understand uh, the potential for drainage of the different bronchopulmonary segments. For example, you can orient a patient in order to drain one or more of the bronchopulmonary segments uh, if there is a uh, pneumonia or a buildup of fluid uh, within a single bronchopulmonary segment. So by changing their posture, you can change the drainage in order to relieve uh, some of those issues. So this is what one single bronchopulmonary lobule looks like, which is the smallest unit here of these segments. You can see the intrasegmental pulmonary artery traveling with the terminal bronchial, uh, branching off into the um, alveoli of the lungs, these uh, bulbous uh, alveoli where the uh, uh, pulmonary artery capilli uh, capillarizes, cap forms capillary uh, on the alveola. Uh, and then you can see how the intersegmental pulmonary vein travels within that connective tissue septum, separating these areas. So uh, because of this, we can name or number all of these different regions. We, we name and number them. So here they are, and they're correlated with the tertiary bronchi that are numbered as well. So just a little quick tip in, in the exams for this course, I'm not going to test you on the bronchopulmonary segments, but it is clinically relevant. You do need to know about it for the reasons I just said about draining regions of the lung and, and surgical reasons. <clears throat> so we can see here that the right primary bronchus is more vertical. Uh, and it's wider than the left primary bronchus. So when an object is inhaled and travels into the trachea, it is going to preferentially travel into the right primary uh, bronchus and travel into these inferior portions of the bronchopulmonary segments. So here now we can see the primary bronchi branching into the secondary bronchi. So there's uh, two or three secondary uh, bronchi per primary bronchus. As you can see here, three on the right, two on the left, and then branching again to form the numbered tertiary bronchi, which supply the numbered uh, bronchopulmonary segments of the lung. <clears throat> so here, uh, just quickly going through these, these are named, these are numbered, they're correlated here for your viewing pleasure, uh, and we can uh, bump through these uh, because I, again, am not testing you on these in particular. But let's go to the projections of uh, these lobes of the lung onto the thoracic wall. So, of course, 
we have these fissures that we've talked about. And the horizontal fissure of the right lung is at about the fourth uh, uh, costal cartilage on the right side. Then we have the oblique fissures, which travel uh, more inferiorly uh, to about uh, following the curvature of the sixth rib. So if you want to auscultate the superior lobes of the lungs, what you are going to do is auscultate above the sixth rib, basically on the anterior surface of the thoracic uh, uh, wall. If you want to auscultate the portions of the inferior lobe, you're going to do that posteriorly and inferiorly. Uh, so on the posterior thoracic wall. To auscultate the middle lobe, of course you want to be below the um, areola uh, on the uh, anterior chest. And, of course, be aware of the cardiac notch and the lingula of the left uh, uh, lung in that same projection. So that's all I have for this lecture on the lungs. Thanks for listening.